I hope you're all well. I am recording this video on Saturday in the Whitworth household. Uh, my husband's here and he's playing with the children and they're having lots of fun uh, and I've managed to negotiate a half hour slot where I can just hide in my office and quickly record this video. Um, so I do apologise if there's any family activity noise in the background, it's Saturday uh, in our house so it is quite, quite busy. Uh, somebody mentioned on the last video that I posted at 5 minutes 25 or something there was a noise that sounded like a child crying in the background no that noise that you heard was my dog Tess because we have a dog as well <laughs> that was my dog Tess who is in the kitchen which is the room behind my office um, and from the kitchen she can see the front door and she was barking at the postman as he put the um, letter through the letterbox. So yeah, it's a very busy house. So sorry, you're going to have to just ignore any noises that you hear. I've got dogs, I've got kids, I've got husbands. One. Um, and as you know, I never go out. So I have a lot of parcels being delivered. So there's always lots of activity and people knocking. Uh, yeah. So... The last video that I recorded, um, I mentioned that I had lots and lots of sessions um, that had mentioned the event this week, which will now be your last week because you'll be watching this next week. Oh, that's a mind bender because <laughs> I'm recording this on Saturday, but I'm not going to post it till next week because I haven't got time next week to record a video because I've got an absolutely jam packed week of sessions once again i've got monday night tuesday night two on wednesday day whilst the kids are at school i've got thursday day friday day and saturday day so i've got a really busy week next week um so yeah that's why i'm recording it now and i'm mentioning that just in case anything has happened in 3dville and you're watching this next week and you're like why hasn't she mentioned that? Mentioned that that's happened today. That's a bit strange. It's because I'm recording it on Saturday. Okay, glad we've cleared that up. So this session that I wanted to share with you guys today, it's one of the sessions that I had this week, which for you is last week, <laughs> uh, that details the event. But ascension but it is superb because it's got everything really it's got a different planet it's got a different type of creature that we've i've never personally experienced this creature before uh it explains the universe in a really beautiful way with deeper information and then towards the end it gives some really really fantastic information for us on planet earth in terms of um the things that we need to be doing in the time of the shift and also the things that we need to be eating and how those things that we are eating are interacting with our bodies so i'll just wet my whistle before we start so when she goes in she says i see all kinds of flowers gardenias vines growing violet purple flowers there's flowers everywhere there's a tree that i saw last night in my dream and it's an apple tree and the apples are a deep maroon color it's almost a deep purple that's how rich this maroon color is beautiful tell me more about this tree that you are connected with that you have seen before in a dream. It's really tall. The leaves on top of it are so full. It's almost like bushes on a tree. The wooden part, the trunk, is very thick and it's such a deep brown colour. And it's strange because it's not like that there, there are apples throughout the entire tree. They're all huddled up in the middle it's like bunches of apples. And as you look at this tree and connect with it more, what else do you become aware of as you connect with the tree? Fireflies. 
there's fireflies. They must love this tree and they light it up. It's dark and the fireflies illuminate the tree and the apples. It's strange. I wouldn't have seen the apples if it wasn't for the fireflies lighting up the bottoms of the apples underneath. And I can see the bottoms, the underneath of the apples. They have these circles around the bottom of them that are darker than the rest. And they're about 10 feet above me in bunches. And I notice that there's some apples on the ground too. And as you gaze at these apples on the ground and you're looking at the ground and then you become aware of yourself, where you are, touching the ground, tell me what you look like. I think it's dark. I'm not really able to see myself. It's just bright where the fireflies are. Tell me more about those fireflies. What do they do? They love this tree. They're not anywhere else. They just love this tree. And they're all at the top of this tree. And as you look at this tree, if you become aware of the surroundings of the tree, tell me more about the surroundings of the tree. It feels like this tree is it. There's a field that I'm in with this big tree and the fireflies and the apples. Oh, but now I notice that I can see the stars. Tell me about them. It's crazy. It's like they almost blend in with the fireflies. But I can see that they are stars. And the only way that I know that they are stars is by the way they are positioned in the sky. Tell me more about the way that they are positioned in the sky. It's like this tree is almost separating the fireflies from the stars. Tell me more about that. It's strange. I call them fireflies, but I don't really know if that's what they are. It's like, it's like these little orbs flying everywhere, but not as an orb, as if you are a refraction of light. You can tell that they are part of the physical reality here. And it's like lots of little lights fluttering around. At this point, I'm just thinking, wow, wherever she is, it sounds amazing. And part of me is thinking, I wonder if they're fairies. Um, and because she's quite low down and not close to them, she can't see that they're fairies. I'm thinking, where is she? So I say to her, and if we look at one of those little lights a little bit closer, and if we connect with them and see them in a little bit more detail, tell me what they look like. They have these little legs and antennas, but I don't think they have wings, or maybe they do have wings, but they're so faint that I can't see them. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not so sure how to describe it. I see that they do have wings now, but they are nearly invisible and they are reflecting the light. And the only way I can describe this is if you think about fish in the ocean and they are so far below in the ocean that they are illuminated in different colours like pinks and blues and in the wings of these little fireflies you can see tiny little pink and blue veins in their wings. Beautiful and as you look at those fireflies with the incredible wings how does that make you feel? They feel like bliss I have the biggest smile on my face. Their energy is so contagious. It's like such a huge blast of high vibration. 
And if you become aware of yourself at this point, your point of perception, what is it that you look like? Because I know at this point she's been immersed in this for long enough now. To start off with, sometimes people are psychologically adverse uh, and they, they just can't or won't see themselves, no, no matter how many times you uh, you give them the suggestion. So I'm thinking we've, we've acclimatised ourselves now. I'm thinking she's probably going to be able to, to tell us what she looks like. And she can. I have wings too. But these little things in the air that I'm seeing with the tiny little wings and legs and antennas, I don't look like them. I am tall and more elongated. But I have wings and, you know, their wings are really hard to see. But when I look at myself, it's really hard not to notice my wings as they take up the entire sides of my body. Tell me more about them. They're kind of like a translucent colour too. And you know how leaves have those little veins in them and they are all throughout these wings. I don't know, but the most similar thing that I think I could liken myself to is a butterfly, except I feel a whole lot bigger than a butterfly. And I still have my body, but it's very narrow, and I have these huge wings. My body is like kind of a black colour. Oh my God, that's so weird. Uh, and it's like I've got, it's long and black, and I also have these legs and arms, and they feel like insecty arms, but I feel really big. And at this point I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. I've not heard of anything like this before. And if you focus on your wings, tell me more about what colour they are. It's like the way that opals are fluorescent. But they don't have a colour. But they are very vibrant. And the colour that my wings have is a light. They are illuminated. And as you stretch those wings out and feel how they feel, tell me what it feels like to have these big wings. Free, powerful. When they flap, they feel very light, but they sound like a condor. How does it feel to flap the wings? It feels normal. This is the way that I get around. And when you get around, when you're using those wings. Tell me more about what you see. There's tons of lights everywhere. This tree is a lot taller than I thought. Or maybe I'm not as big as I thought. I don't know. But it's like this tree. It seemed before that I could reach out and grab it. But now I see it's towering over the ground and it's filled with these apples and the scent of it is so sweet. It almost smells like roses, but they are palatable. It's making my mouth water. <laughs> it's just this tree with all this illumination around it. These light beings and stars and it's almost like this tree is so tall that it's in the sky or maybe the sky is so low that the sky is in the tree everything feels so strange i can see like a crescent type moon it's night time it's dark and there's all of these lights fluttering around and sweet fruity smells so at this point I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing, but there's only so far we can get here because it's night time, because there's the lack of light. She can't really see anything to tell us anything else. So I close this scene and I move her to another important day that we need to see. Um, 
so she says, so I'm back in that gardeny type place that I started off in earlier. It's bright now. I can see the blue sky and there's fluffy clouds and there's a path and it's like meadows that have really tall yellowish tinted grass and there's flowers everywhere and the smell is intoxicating gardenias plumerias mangoes fruit trees tropical flowers it's filled with vibrancy flowers and fruits and now it's the daytime and we can see everything clearly and we can see these beautiful flowers and smell these intoxicating smells I want you to have a good look down at your body and your wings and tell me what you look like in the daytime I look like a really beautiful looking bug and then she laughs her head off. I can fly and I've got these really magnificent coloured wings, but I can also walk around. It's, huh, it's like I know all of the little lights that were fluttering around are still here, as occasionally I get a glimpse of them, almost like how the light reflects on the ocean water but it's like they're all fluttering around but I am able to walk and I am definitely able to walk and I am taller and I kind of look like a bug <gasps> but I've also got this beautiful face tell me about that it's very symmetrical it's very angular the colour, it's like, God, this is so weird. I change colour somehow. Even though I'm a bug, I've got really beautiful hair on my head. Maybe I'm not a bug, but I just thought I was because I've got these wings. But my body looks like the slender part that butterflies have. But now in the day, I can see that my body is a bluish purple and pink that changes depending on the light and how I feel. Tell me more about your beautiful hair. It's like a golden, but in between like a golden and white. And the way that it captures the colour of light it adds a really interesting dimension. And the wings that are kind of translucent, there's these bright pinks and greens and purples that flow through veins, clear and translucent, but beautiful veins flowing throughout them. My hair is mostly gold and white, but you can see all of these blues and purples and pinks too. Wow! Wow, like these colours on me, they're incredible! It's nothing I've ever seen before. If you look around in this place where you are, can you see anybody who looks like you? Who's taller? No, I'm the only one. It's a strange dynamic. I almost feel like the other things fluttering around wouldn't be here if I wasn't here. Tell me more about that. I've just got this like really motherly feeling. There's thousands of these things. So I'm not so sure what my role is, but it's like, it's not like they're following me, but what? Is it like my aura? What? I can't tell if my aura is so large, like massive, that these little firefly bugs are a part of it, or if they just like to be in the general area of where I am. 
everywhere I go, they go, but they take up a really wide space. They're always around me, no matter where I go. And as you connect to these little creatures that follow you wherever you go, and as you connect deeper down into that relationship that you have between you, tell me more about that relationship. It's more of the relationship that we have to the area around us or to the environment. We bring vibrancy wherever we go. I see, so wherever you are, you bring a higher level of energy. Yes, and all of these fruits and trees and flowers benefit by us being here as we infuse them with life and flavour flavor and vibrancy. Tell me more about that. We just be. We don't do anything. We just appear. Even if something is dying, there's these roses, like they're almost a brownish colour. But when we are there, and it's not even like it's me doing anything, I just walk around and then these little beings follow me and they infuse everything with life. So these brown roses, it looks like it's withering, but then these little creatures flutter around it and it's almost like when you see a swarm of gnats and they fly around and they each make their circular movements and spirals. And that's what these little things are doing around all of these plants that may be losing vibrancy. They flutter around them and it brings back the vibrancy and that makes them more beautiful than they have ever been. So these little things, these fireflies, they carry life force with them? Yes. Yes, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. And in this place where you are, are you aware of any other creatures that are doing any other jobs like you? There's these um, worm-like things. They're green, almost caterpillar looking things oh these are what the fireflies start off as it's not what i started off as but these beautiful little green inchworm looking things they look like they're eating things they look like they're eating the plants but i'm not so sure what the plants get from that Oh, I see. It's not the plants that they're eating. When the plants lose their life force energy, it's because there are forces that aren't visible to the naked eye. And these forces are tiny, tiny particles that suck out life force energy. They feed on the life of the plant. And these little green caterpillar things are able to eat the particles that take away that life force energy of the plant. And so it's like everything that would be taking away life force energy, these beings, these fireflies, they infuse them with life, even when they are these tiny little inchworm green baby caterpillars. Wow. And as you look around this place where you are, is there any el anything else that you see that is of significance? There's a big body of water. It's like an ocean. It's like, usually when there's an ocean, you see sand. But here, where you would see sand, it's grass, where I am. There is no sand. 
and this garden, this grass where I am, with the tree, it, it, it extends out into the ocean. Tell me more about the ocean. What are you aware of when you look at the ocean? Tons of life force particles bouncing all over it. It's pretty still, but there's powerful waves. But it doesn't seem... Like sometimes when you see the ocean and the waves here, they can seem so intimidating because of how powerful they are. But here, they are gentle. The force is gentle. And it's because this water is plasma. It's a big body of plasma. And I don't know what to think about it. I don't know how to explain it. It's like you can feel it, but it's got this lightness to it. Like on Earth, if you got hit by a wave, it can be really abrupt and it can take you off your feet. But this plasma material, if you get hit with it, you don't move. It kind of moves through you or you move through it. Tell me more about that. It goes in really deep and there's all sorts of little, little pink. They're not fish. I don't know what these things are. They're just like, I, I can't describe them, but there's just a bunch of these little colorful pink. Oh, there's dolphins as well. Tell me about the dolphins. They're really sweet and they look like they have big smiles, but I think that's just how their faces are. They're like a big family and they travel in groups. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what this stuff is. Describe it as you interact with it. It feels like sticky is not the word. It's like a thick, airy, it's like a mix between air, water and electricity. What? So she sounds shocked herself as she says that. Okay, I say electricity, as you can see that there's like this force pulsing through it. And it's like, when you look at water, there's sun. And if there's trees nearby, you can see the light on the trees. But that's all throughout this stuff. It's like it's fueled. There's something electric about it. And it's a clearish blue colour. But there's, if you look closely, there's all these colours pulsing through it. How does it feel when you immerse a part of yourself into it? It's like the fountain of youth, if you were to call it something. A fountain of youth of sorts. It cleanses everything. It's like a powerful cleansing medium or tool. But it's like it looks clear and then if I were to reach into it I can't see that part of myself that I have put in there. But it looks clear. I really, I really don't know how to explain this. That's the sound of my dog <laughs> barking at the postman. Uh, there's nothing here on earth to compare it to. I've never seen anything like this. Are you able to fully immerse yourself into this substance and still be able to breathe? Yes, I think the reason I am so beautiful is because of this stuff. It's really powerful. And I'm not so sure of exactly what it does, but it brings youth and it keeps things young by infusing them with life. It cleanses things. 
Of all the impurities and diseases, it clears everything. Beautiful. And as you connect with this plasma ocean that contains this incredible energy, is there any message that it would like to give us today that we need to know? It's about the way information is stored, the storage of information. Everything stores information, but it's up to us what we do with it. That's what I'm hearing, but I don't really understand what it has to do with this plasma stuff. Ah, oh, I see. We have to be able to receive it. So not everybody could come in here, into this plasma, and receive its healing abilities and stored energy that it can bestow upon us. You have to be open and willing to receive it, otherwise it does not do anything. There is wisdom to be gained and understood through everything, but it is up to us if we allow ourselves to receive it. Just because something has great power to transform does not mean that we will allow it to transform us. It's like a magic. It's like first, you have to believe it. And when you believe it, through believing it, you can receive it. Believe it to receive it. And I'm just going to pause there because I think, you know, linking that to ascension right now and many people are half in, half out with ascension and they'll say things like, well, yeah, I, I kind of believe it. But, you know, I just want to see a little bit more of something first before I fully believe it. But that's not how this stuff works. It really isn't. You have to believe and know with every fibre of your being that ascension is happening, that the time is now, that we are in it, that we are simply altering our frequency as a collective that little bit more before our new frequency wave fully engages into that fifth dimensional reality. You have to believe it with every part of your heart and soul. You have to meditate on the new earth. You have to think about the new earth. You have to think about love. You have to think about connecting with the light beings and light workers and truthers all over the world. You have to think about unity, peace, oneness, kindness, love across the globe. And through believing and holding that frequency so strongly inside of ourselves that is how the physical world that we see outside of us then aligns to our internal frequency so you do have to feel it know it see it in here first to see it out there and that is what we are doing now so that's why I will always say to people, please switch your TVs off. Don't look at what's going on out there. Don't get caught up into it. Because when you are concentrating what's in here on what's out there, then that is affecting what you are going to see out there. Whereas if all of us at this point in time concentrate on what's in here and thinking about what we want to see the free and holding that high frequency that we want to manifest externally then the whole canvas changes and we start to see new earth because we are holding the resonance required to attract the new earth frequency so I totally understand what this incredible hominoid butterfly creature on this amazing planet that's got the plasma ocean that stores all of this information is trying to tell us. They're trying to give us a clue as to what we should be doing. So at this point I say, is there anything else that this beautiful humanoid 
butterfly being would like us to know today. You have the power to heal everything that you touch and you don't have to do anything except to believe that you can. If someone were to immerse themselves in this plasma which does not believe in its powers then it would not do anything for them. But if I used this material and harnessed its powers and all of its healing properties, it then has all of its healing properties because I believe it. The power to heal everything, this plasma, even though it's highly, highly concentrated in this area where I am, this plasma is actually in everything, everywhere in the universe and within this plasma is the information of the life force. Yes. And this confuses me a little. I'm like, everything? Even the things that seem to be taking away life force energy? The plasma's in them? But it is. It's in everything and everywhere because we are all connected and we are all one. It is what binds everything. Everything is bound by it. So the power to transform and to heal and bring youth and abundance, it exists everywhere and in everything. And all you have to do is believe in it. And that is what makes the difference. Belief. And when things stop believing in the force, that is when the life force leaves. So I say, beautiful. Is there anything else that we need to know from this planet today? The plants and fruits and the fruits that plants offer are growing in vibrancy on your planet. You have been led to believe that the soil is depleted of nutrients. And because the soil is depleted, that you do not get as many nutri nutrients in your food. But that is a misunderstanding in your science. Because what is actually happening is everything, like plants, are actually gaining in vibrancy and they are becoming supercharged. And they have high concentrations of this plasma that we speak of within them and are, and are able to fully activate and we might want to consume them or just enjoy the fragrances of them. We are able to charge even more these plants by putting our intention within them. So these plants that are already becoming more and more potent by putting our thoughts into the plants as we prepare them, we actually make them even more potent. And the reason for this is thoughts flow. So thoughts flow through the plasma and the plasma holds on to it. That's why the belief is so important. And so whenever we are working with plants, <clears throat> whether it's drinking tea, growing a garden, eating fruit, we need to acknowledge it as beings with information that we must allow ourselves to receive in order to become fully activated. So just to recap on that, when we're preparing food that's plants, we need to have in our awareness that these plants contain within them 
within their DNA information that we also need to receive that's going to help our frequency and vibration and it's going to help our DNA to um, become more activated with light in this particular time. Our DNA is activating and all of these plants, their DNA is activating. And these plants and fruits and vegetables and us humans, we are unlocking abilities. All of our abilities are being unlocked and harnessed. And it's through the DNA that's activating. And the more that our DNA activates, the more of this plasma energy can be harnessed, which is the life force. So the plasma energy is the life force. So the more our DNA is activated, the more our DNA is able to harness the life force from the plasma energy. And then because of that, the more plasma energy that is stored within the DNA, we then have more access to the life force and the information and the energy that is stored within. So that's a real, that's a real uh, mind bender. But basically, the more our DNA is activated and the more we eat these plants whose DNA is also activated, we become able to unlock more of the energy that is inside of this plasma life force which connects all beings and all things throughout the universe uh, plus the more we believe that we are connected to all beings and all things and the more we believe that when we prepare ourselves a nutritious meal that has been grown from nature from our planet the more we believe that that contains light information and codes that is going to further our DNA towards our ascension. That is what actually happens because it is our belief in that that allows us to unlock more of this life force within this plasma energy. Whew! So it's important to believe that it is happening as the belief in it makes it so. And in the belief, that's where all of the power lies. And as we grow to believe it in groups, our power grows. And the power of all of these plants are highly activated as well. Not only do the healing abilities that these plants offer us begin to grow, but we will feel them sooner as well. And so the effects will be perceived in a quicker and more potent way it will enter the body at a more accelerated rate and these plants are unlocking powers within them that we have not even begun to conceptualize so at this point i say wow thank you so much for all the information thank you very much and we allow that being that planet the plasma to recede back to the time space reality dimension location where they belong with much love and much thanks and then i um i asked to speak specifically to this client's higher self so we can get some more information now i do want to share a couple of bits of this client's higher self information because this information applies i believe to the majority of light workers who are doing what they do right now on the planet we can all benefit from knowing this information which is why I'm going to share it today so I ask why did you show her this place and this beautiful insect human type being that she is on this planet because she needs to believe in the power that she holds just by being just by being in a certain area, that area is forever changed and the people are forever changed because of her. And she doesn't have to do anything other than be herself. And that's what she needs to remember. 
in the power of being herself. The kind of power that she has is to infuse life into everything just because of her frequency and just by being near it. And not only that, this power is everywhere. But we just have to allow ourselves to receive it. And when we receive it for ourselves, that is when we are able to share it with everything around us. And the reason I wanted to share that was because, you know, I get this question time and time again. Every person that I see always says, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really think I've got my act together. Should I be doing more? Um, you know, why am I here? And pretty much every time the answer is, you have brought your frequency, which is considerably higher than the norm in this place, to this place. So just by being here in this now moment, that is what you are doing for planet Earth and for the ascension of humans. What powers does she have access to now? Just by touching things, she infuses them with light. She has ability to see things far in advance than other people. She is a sponge and a clear receiver of information. And she is a transmitter of frequency and information to the collective and that is needed in this time of ascension and I think that is true for all of us if we are working on ourselves and we have got our energetic bodies in alignment then we are great channels of frequency and information and when we receive that information we then transmit it out to the collective just by being part of the collective consciousness here on earth. And I ask the higher self, the lifetime that you showed her today, are you able to give us any information around where that is in the universe? And the higher self said it was Sirius A. Now I haven't had too many people that have been to Sirius A. I've had many people that have gone to Sirius B. I think I may have had one other person that's, that's gone to Sirius A, maybe two. Um, and it doesn't matter if you've had a QHHT or a past life regression or multidimensional session where you've gone to Sirius A and your perception of Sirius A has been different to that one that I've read out today. It doesn't matter because don't forget that consciousness is relative to the frequency that you hold in that particular place. So I will let you muse on that one. So um, the perception that you have had when you've had an experience and you've been to Sirius A and how your consciousness has perceived that space may be entirely different to somebody else's perception of that place who is of a higher frequency. Is there anything else that she needs to know about her star family and the connections that she has? They help her receive this information and they receive information from her. They are always in communication whether she realises it or not. They are here. They are always here. They are just in a different dimension. No matter how far away they were, because in our time-space reality our perception is skewed, when you look at it in space reality distance, it doesn't matter. They would like her to communicate more. When she is in clear communication with them, there is a lot of information to be received. Now, the reason I'm sharing that is I think this is a message for all of us at the moment. And for me, big time. The problem I have is I'm normally too tired from doing my work and being a mother that um, I normally don't have much time to to try and do additional communication with my star family. Um, but I think all of us need to, at this point in time, up our game 
and try to communicate on a more consistent basis with our star families who are all here right now uh, and to open ourselves up um, in a, a protected way which you can do in a white light pyramid and ask your higher self to protect you and to ensure that only beings that have your highest and best good are able to come through you can even narrow it down to only beings that are a part of your soul so are a part of your multi-dimensional self um, but I think all of us need to be communicating more frequently uh, now with our star family what can she do to have a better connection with her star family? She already knows this, classic higher self statement. Meditate, look at the stars, connect with crystals. Crystals are nearly a cell phone to communicate with star beings. Moving the body. It's important that the body is worked upon to receive information. As we move our body, we move stagnant energy out of the body and the stagnant energy are blockages that prevent us from receiving light and light is information. Stretching. Whenever you stretch, it moves out density. And so then that space in the body is more of a functioning receiver of information then it's functioning optimally and so movement is important and stretching is very important. She needs to eat apples. The plants are highly activating. Essential oils. All natural things that come from the planet are tools which really need to be utilised more right now as they are tools that are gifted to humanity to get through this shift that is happening and the humans need these tools right now in order to function optimally through this shift and to assist herself and others through this difficult time which is occurring now on earth. Which are some of the most beneficial plants or fruits that we can eat to help us through the shift? It is different for everybody, but fruits are highly potent right now. Fruits and greens, but more like um, a wheat grass kind of green. The ocean vegetables are very good too, and highly activating, as the ocean is highly activated right now. There is much information that has been spread on the planet regarding the ocean and the pollution but also the information that is saying that the ocean is disgusting and is filled with plastics. Yes, it does have plastic in it, but the water on this planet is the most powerful thing here. And it will never lose its potency while ever it is here. The, the ocean is highly activated. You have to remember that water receives and stores information. So all of the information from space that our planet is moving through right now is being stored in the memory of the ocean. So when you eat things, plants I am speaking of here, not fish, I do not recommend eating fish as they do not have the same ability as the plants in clearing out the heavy metals that are within their system but the plants are doing very well they are doing very well in the ocean and they are adapting very well and their powers are heightened as we are reaching this very high vibrational place in the cosmos now and that frequency and information is being stored in the ocean and it is being stored in the vegetables of the ocean. So it is very important to add these now to your diet. Sea moss and algae and the salts and the minerals of the oceans are very important too. Is there anything else that she needs to know about the shift that is happening on the planet and this high frequency energy 
that we are moving into now in the cosmos. We are here and it has happened and it is here and we are in it. The dark negative entity control systems and structures would lead you to believe otherwise. But it's already here now. As you know, I am sure many have experienced it already by tapping into it, even if it was only for brief moments. It is the collective minds that are preventing many from being in it. That's why we need to utilise the power of the plants, because the plants just are. They have an ability to store and receive information. They don't doubt. They just are. The humans doubt and they have their disbeliefs. And that's why it's so important to work with the plants as the plants have the information stored within them. They have the frequencies and they have the information of new earth stored within them which you can tap into if you wish as the frequency is there the frequency is here now do not limit yourselves be all you can be the time that you are in right now is truly limitless situations experiences and happenings are happening on your planet that one could never have dreamt of before and it is because of the ascension on this planet and you need to access tools and technologies that you have never had access to before and it is very important to access these tools and technologies these technologies talking about zoom and the internet are allowing you to connect with each other take advantage of connecting to your people on a large scale. It is very important now that we are all connecting and that humanity come together and connect worldwide as we, you, are already connected through the plasma. It flows all around you and within you and it is now important to acknowledge this connection with each other and how this plasma flows within us and without us. You are all truly connected and you all have much to offer. Much is needed in your connections and there is great value to be given and received as you connect around the world. Now, what's the main learning point of that session? The main learning point of that session is on this planet, we've been taught that we're all individual. Everything's disconnected. We're all disconnected from each other. The planet is just something that we stand on. It sometimes provides us with food if we even acknowledge that fact. And this viewpoint that this incredible being gives us is, no, you're all connected. Everything is connected. Not only are you all connected on your planet, but the entire cosmos is connected through the fluid of this life force plasma that connects everything, that runs through everything, that is everything. So we have to acknowledge the fact that we are connected. And we also have to acknowledge the fact that the frequency, the fifth dimensional frequency and the light and the information for that, that frequency is here now. What we are doing is polarizing our half of the split of the collective. We're getting our side of the split, our frequency high enough so that our external reality reflects what we hold inside. I hope that made sense. But as we know, and as you know from my videos, there is a split occurring throughout our society. A choice is being made at this point because it is the time, 
in the cosmos when this choice needs to be made. People are choosing a service to self path or a service to others path. And there is no judgment there because at a certain point, everybody, whether you've chosen service to self or service to others, at a certain point in the, in the dimensions, every being, everything repolarizes back towards the light, service to others. But certain beings choose a different experience. Certain beings choose to experience the service to others path or dark path, if you will, in order to gain a greater awareness of what love is. And so at this point, our planet, the carnage, the craziness that you see outside is all to do with spirituality and it's to do with what our souls are choosing in terms of where we want to go next the path we want to choose are we choosing service to others or are we choosing service to self and for our side which is service to others we now need to vibrate at such a rate as a collective consciousness through connecting with each other more and being in each other's lives more and doing things like this more that our consciousness and our vibration vibrates at such a rate and that comes from inside here that our external reality out there then mirrors our internal reality so that's what we're leading up to right now that being said I've just had an idea pop in my head and I need to mull that over and think about it a bit more but I'd love to try and connect people a bit more around the world, those people who would be interested, you know, in like um, a group Zoom chat or, I don't know, I need to think about that bit. I want to try and connect people who want to, who want to do it, um, provide people with an opportunity to jump on a Zoom call where we can all talk together and share our experiences so that's something i need to think about hold that thought i'll come back to you on that one and then the final thing i want to share today before i go um is somebody who i follow on twitter um shared a very very poignant thing the other day which caught my attention and it made me think a lot and it said something like, and I, I won't have got this right verbatim because I'm pulling it from my head, but something along the lines of, you know, when you go to college, before you leave college, you're expected to take some exams and the results of those exams determine whether you pass or fail your time at college, your college course, your college experience. And it determines whether you graduate or whether you need to resit another year or the whole thing. Those exams determine what you move on to next, whether you do move on or whether you think, no, I've not quite got that yet. I need to spend more time doing that. And what this individual said is, we're in that exam now. This is your exam. This what you see in the external world, what you see out there is your exam. What have you learnt in your time on earth whilst you have been here? Or have you remembered who you truly are and have you woken that frequency back up inside of you? And these exams that we are in right now your response to that external environment and what is happening determines whether you pass college and whether you graduate or whether the powers that be if you like your higher self your guardians your council decide now her soul's not quite got that lesson yet she needs more time she needs another 26,000 years. No thanks. <laughs> uh, 
I've only just survived the last 26,000. I'm not, I'm not up for that. Um, so over the next few days, weeks, months, hopefully not months, um, be mindful of that. Treat everything as if it is an exam and a test. I'm going to leave you with that one. <laughs> Until the next time I see you guys, make sure you keep vibrating high. Love you lots. Take care. Bye.